What's up guys, this is Jaffa Party. Today we're just going to have a look at some of these Parkitect updates. Uh, it's been a while since I made a video like this, but uh, there's been a hell of a lot of updates. So I thought I'd just go through them all with you now. Um, on screen you'll probably see some gameplay that I'll record in the future. Just recording this separately. But yeah, to start off with... Um, there's basically a lot of recolouring things from back in the day, 6th of June this is from uh, Paths don't connect through fences uh, New shark costume for entertainers New set of brick walls um, And There's a lot of like modded brickworks um, There's a brickwork set by Grotor But it uses geometry and the individual bricks and grout A wall is a simple flat quad with a texture and a normal pap map Ugh. I said pop, what the hell? A normal map to give the bricks some subtle depth which should be better for performance. Um, regarding performance, I did have issues like loading big maps, you know, like pre-made maps from the workshop. Um, like things with, like every single square has like something in it and it's like mass craziness. So yeah, I had some like running difficulties with that as it was a bit intensive loading every single thing on the map. Hopefully they'll fix that by now. Um, paths don't connect through walls anymore. There's some edge cases with the round and diagonal walls. We'll have to see how they work. Um, I'm just reading through this right now. Let you guys know. Um, there's been added a no entry sign, which is good. It's like from the classic uh, rather across tycoon days where you could pretty much put a no entry sign in front of the entrance so people would never leave your park and you just make endless amounts of money which is pretty cool flat, flat ride fences can also be replaced by building a wall or fence next to them which allows for some customability customizability can't even say words these days i'm very ill by the way so i apologize if i sound terrible and i'm not scripting this because i'm lazy um E3 happened June 19th, added underwater tunnels for paths and tracks, uh, that's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, art stream, they always have art streams designing new like, well, designing the art for the different rides and s s different things like that. Um, lots of translations for different languages, French, uh, Spanish, German, etc. Heat maps for uh, roller coasters have added have been added to like show velocity and maximum speeds and stuff on uh, roller coasters, which is pretty cool. And then we get into the first big update on the third of July, Alpha Three. Um, there's a motion simulator ride, um, two by two tiles, smallest ride in the game. Um, Hydraulic based Help visualize the current weather a bit better So there's like a bit of a um, Adaptation to the weather cycle I guess um, So far there's been a sole programmer working on Pagatech so far and he says it'd be cool to finish it alone There's a bunch of work left though and our sale numbers are looking good enough that we can afford to hire more people Which is pretty cool um, two people from Parkitect Nexus are helping with the programming tasks and then add to the change log I'll probably repeat myself here a bit but there's motion simula simulator added a shark costume for the entertainer added brick walls set and industrial props added sounds for the giga coaster, mini coaster, alpine coaster, suspended coaster, monorail, ghost mansion ride and the inverted dark ride um, a new path style has been added Paths don't connect through walls and fences. Paths don't spawn handrails if walls and fence already, exi already exist. Um, working queue signs for like rides, I guess. Text signs that can be put on paths and act as no entry signs. Underwater tunnels. Track tunnels automatically updating when terraforming. Search bar for blueprints. Embedded log, log flume flat. Oh. Embedded, embedding log flume tracks into the water terrain without spawning tunnels uh, stats graph for track rides uh, cloud shadows, dutch names 
improve the look of flowers and tunnels and improve the save game load times by less than 50% or, or under... Yeah. <laughs> Fixed a case where guests could queue for a closed attraction. Fixed various issues with building fences and fixed guests rarely thought an empty queue is full and didn't enter it. Okay, that's badly worded, but okay, I understand. Uh, should fix very rare case where mechanics would get stuck in ride end gates. So yeah, that's a lot of things, and then there's a massive devlog of some woman called M going to um, have an amusement park in Vancouver recording like actual uh, roller coaster rides and such. Um, the next one is rendering. Big packs can contain tens or even hundreds of thousands of objects and Unity was not great at rendering lots of individual objects. Upgrading to Unity 5.4 which they've been testing for over a year and a half so it seems stable. It adds in ten instancing um, which is a bit like MMOs I guess. Um, a technique that allows faster rendering of multiple copies of the same objects and moves a bunch of work that previously needed to be done on the CPU over to the GPU. Due to the way scenery works in Pakatech, the same objects are usually on screen tens of hundreds of times as a simulation game. We need to use all the CPU time we can get, so it's perfect. Um, guests, this is all like rendering and like optimization settings, I guess. Um, want to have as many guests in the park as possible so they've already received the most attention. Um, working on improvements, mouse picking. Some of the parks you've built got so big that even something as seemingly trivial as figuring out what object is below the mouth, mouse could be become a performance problem. We've previously used to, uh, Unity's mesh colliders for this. Their intended purposes is more for adding physics interactions to a couple of objects, but it worked well enough in the past. Since the game received scenery and more content, though we've seen parks where it could take up to a second to figure out what's below the mouse in extreme cases, replaced, a custom, replaced with a custom solution that's more suited for their needs, like the game's needs, or developers' needs for coding and such, and brings down time to a couple of milliseconds. So yeah, then it basically shows a bunch of graphs um, Graphs are boring, so I won't show them. But um, basically, a bunch of performance issues and being able to differentiate objects on the screen under your mouse and stuff like that. Um, seems pretty good. Um, track ride visualizations received an update, only being able to show one value for the entire segment, which was precise enough for most cases, but lacking on other segments like loops or st scaled curves. And then there's like a velocity image, basically where the color changes depending on vertical G's, like G forces and lateral G's, um, which is pretty good. Gaining speed as well, it adds detail. And there's a new 4D cinema as well added to the game. And then to the next one, I apologise for this being so long, it's been like 10 minutes already and I've been mumbling my words and I've been ill for the last week and I apologise wholeheartedly. Um, but this next one has significant changes under the hood and thus might be a bit less stable than the previous one. Um, worked on audio, a red coaster on the ground and a blue coaster that's been raised, they're both roughly in the same position on the screen from this view. So it's to differentiate sounds based on location. They're working on that, I guess. So like in the image, there's a blue roller coaster in the top and a red roller coaster in the bottom. So if you zoom into the blue one, you'll be able to hear the blue one louder than the red one and vice versa. I think that's the point they're trying to get to. Um, two coasters are not close to each other at all, no matter where we place the audio listener. All right, so yeah, that basically sums up what I just said. Um, onto the changelog, um, performance improve improvements, added a spinning coaster, added the 4D cinema, added palm trees, added customizable colours for shop products, added the area de delete tool that will come in hella use, That's, I'm glad they added that. Um, control instructions for the beginning of the tutorial. Um, monitor selection which is pretty neat, 
camera scroll and zoom sensitivity, autosave, rebindable keys, detection of performance problems due to mods, lateral and longitude G visualizations and graphs, audio panning, ride stat visualization, weather, janitor behavior for cleaning dirty toilets, uh, <laughs> translation support, guest spawn rate increased by 25%, fixed heat maps visualizing, sorry, fixed heat maps, fixed heat map visualizations not working on lowest quality settings, fixed rides staying that they have outdated values after loading save game, fixed raised objects not being placed at correct height, um, fixed broken employee colors and fixed errors when trying to load a save game. So yeah, mainly performance things and more additions as always, more content is good. And then um, from the 8th of August, um, they've added a decoration object, like a pipette slash uh, cloning tool for like uh, decoration and stuff like that. Um, being suggested a couple of times, speeds up building. Um, yeah, not, not too complimented, complimented, complicated to implement. My goodness, reading fast is difficult, dude. Like, I recommend you try it, it's really hard. <laughs> anyway, between the Alpha 4 release and a patch for it, we started working on some higher tasks that will likely keep us busy for the majority of this month. Luke started with the designer, scenario designer, which will ultimately allow us to offer different starting packs with different settings and challenges. That's pretty good, so you'll be able to, at some point, create your own scenarios and, like, have your own, like, objective based parks and stuff that would be cool pretty neat um, improved working on handling of trash and shop resources you need it for bigger parks etc and then for the next one 15th of august trash deliveries or trash and deliveries are going to be handled in a totally different way um, there's a new deliveries building which will re replace the current crate and trash stacking tiles. It can be connected through pneumatic tubes and conveyor belts to depots which can be placed throughout the parks. Shops can be associated with a depot. De depot? <laughs> depot. If they are, crates will automatically travel to that depot from where they are. And then they, they get picked up by the haulers and manually transported to final meters to the shop instead of all the way out from the crate stack. Inversely, trash can be dropped off at a depot and then gets automatically pumped to the deliveries building. Might sound weird and unrealistic, but for at least the Disney parks are known to really use a trash disposal system that operates like this. And then there's like a reference link to Disney. So it's cool that they're taking cues from like parks in the real world, you know, like Disney and like um, the woman called M who went to the park in Vancouver to record actual sounds and stuff for realism. That's pretty sweet. Um, I'm not aware of a park that uses an automated system for transporting goods, but there are warehouses, airports, warehouses and airports that operate huge conveyor belt systems like that, so it's not an entirely unrealistic scenario, at least. It should be fun and makes sense for gameplay reasons to have this. So yeah, instead of like carrying the crates all the way from the entrance, if your if your map's huge, if you like, yeah, if your pack's huge, and um, it'll take forever for your crates. To get all the way from the entrance to like the, the furthest corner in your park if you have a shop in that corner it'll take forever so this basically fixes that by putting um, dedicated depots lo uh, located around um, your park to dedicate time for them for the shops that you set to them which is pretty cool um, there's also a tracking of shop and attraction revenue um, a few financial things that have been added and you like I did have personal problems freaking um, being able to make a profit with, in this park my mate Phil freaking made loads of money I don't know how but yeah probably cheated and bragged about it but <laughs> I don't know probably not uh, but yeah I'm glad they finally fixed it um, tax that gun done in time for monthly offer update ship whatever is ready at that point etc so yeah Adding new things, making things easier. And then a bit more to the crate transportation. Um, as described from last week, the dep depots have to know for which shops they are responsible. Will you reuse parts of the UI for synchronizing attractions for setting this up? 
All shops got updated with doors in the back. If possible, employees prefer using those instead of entering the shop from the front, even if it makes taking a detour. And then Garrett made new awnings, which look quite nice for shops. Um, so there's also a scenario editor. Scenario files can now be saved, and it's possible to place park entrances and guest spawn points. That's pretty sweet. And there's a bunch of polish. Oh, wait, there's a bunch of polish <laughs> and UI work left to do, but it's starting to become unusable. I said polish because it's literally spelled the same as polish. I'm sorry, okay. Anyway, moving on. Garrett's been busy making all sorts of decorative objects for the medieval theme. So I guess they're doing themes. That's pretty cool. So there's like an archery thing, uh, different types of wells, uh, a wall with like targets on them, and like uh, like dummies and awnings and hay bales and pots, things you'd see in like medieval times. Pretty cool. And then there's a thing underneath it which looks like scaffolding. Um, Sebastian made slopes and supports work for the transport system and transporting trash. Cool. So uh, maybe they have scaffolding now? I don't know. Who knows? Um, moving on. Um, this update will likely cause bugs and other issues. Oh shit. Um, they've added a park as a scenario, I suppose. Called Heartland Park by Lord Gonchar. Phew, we managed to get it all stable just in time for this month's offer update. Somehow, this update feels like the trickiest and most exhausting one so far, even though the change log is shorter than usual. And then more medieval props such as flags and cannons and treasure chests, they look cool. And then the change log is added resource and trust transport system, added the beginnings of a scenario editor, added deco object, pipette tool, added shop and attraction sale stats, added restocking shops from the back, added a bunch of deco objects, medieval props, awnings and scaffolding etc. So they do have scaffolding, I knew it! Um, <laughs> Added check translation, added performance improvements, fixed weather not updating after a year, fixed guests not sorry, fixed guest guests being confused about whether they want to go after using a trans whether where they want to go after using a transportation ride. I can't read things, I'm sorry. Fixed path attachments sometimes not being built in the same position that's shown as preview. Fixed not being able to select objects through path tunnels. Updating the 20th of September, it is now October, but uh, <laughs> we added a hydraulically launched coaster on a special launch track seg segment, the catch car grabs the train and accelerates. That's pretty cool. This coaster features vertical sections with rolls, they're gonna take time to improve the supports, it looks a bit weird, they've probably updated it by now. Um, Luke added thunderstorms, they turned out really nice. We'll leave you it you'll leave it to you to discover what they do. Oh there's a picture! Holy shit! It's like a moving image. But like thunder and lightning bolts like actually hit your park and stuff. Maybe they could kill people. Awesome. Anyway. <laughs> uh, next one, 27th of September, another art stream yet again. Um, Luke added guest settings to the scenario editor. Um, working on loans, you'll be offered a couple of loan options with different interest rates and run times to choose from that change every now and again. Once this is complete, we can start working on money balance and going bankrupt to finally get away from the purely sandbox only scenarios. Employee, path refl employee paths reflect the colour of the zone they are in. So that's pretty cool. They're like coloured, like green and blue and red and stuff. That's pretty sweet. Moving on to the most latest update, 5th of October, Alpha 6, available for download, devlog update, 117. I'm sorry that this video is 20 minutes long, like holy mother of swear words. The finance overview was one of the first pieces of proper UI we put into the game early last year. Back then it seemed like a good idea to keep it very compact, but in the end it made things a bit cluttered and confusing. Luke replaced it with a proper table that should be more helpful. Tim has completed the loans, since you can't go bankrupt there yet, they are terribly useful. They aren't terribly useful at the moment, but they're in Alpha 6 anyway for feedback gathering. And then there's quite a big change log. Added the hydraulically launched coaster, added bumper cars, added loans, even though you can't go bankrupt yet, so it's just for like feedback base. Um, added attraction maintenance costs, added thunderstorms, added rain, rain ambience, 
colorized employee paths by zone color, audio improvements, finance overview improvements, um, performance of large terrain areas and zones rendering, like performance update. Um, for macOS, uh, Metal Render is available, or Metal Renderer if available. I'm not sure what that means, I don't have a Mac. Um, fix not being able to synchronize with stations of the same track ride anymore. People get stuck inside utility buildings slash ride platforms if dropped onto them. Um, fix problems with placing stuff on the terrain border. Fixed being able to change banking angle using scroll wheel if banking angle is disabled. <laughs> What's that mean? Uh, <laughs> fixed issues when placing objects next to the terrain model. So yeah, some of it's a bit like over my head because I'm not like a developer or a coder or anything. Um, but there are a few things like additions to the game, like roller coasters and bumper cars and loans and like UI changes and stuff like that, which is pretty interesting. I'm sorry that it lasted like 21 minutes. It's still going right now. But yeah, I'll leave it at this. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. If you like the video, please leave a like. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. And I'll see you for the next one. Peace.